Hey guys, as always, this is Mitch at Diagnostic North, and today we're going to show you how we got a 2000 series 4th generation Allison transmission out of lip mode. So this service call started off just like every other. Customer complaint, transmission stuck in lip mode, and a gear icon in the dash. Let's go ahead and see if we can confirm that. So as you can see, I'm plugged in using JPro, and I currently have an active fault code P2671, actuator supply voltage, high side driver 2. So before we go any further, let's break it down. From customer complaint to verifying repairs in seven simple steps. Number one, the customer interview. This is the part where you gain information on the problem and question if there are any additional symptoms. Number two, listen and interpret the complaint. Make sure to note this on your work order and remember to include the answers to the questions asked during the customer interview. Number three, confirming the complaint. This sometimes involves a road test, or it is as simple as confirming a fault with your scan tool on one of the many control modules on these multiplexed networks. This is typically important when a customer has multiple units, especially in a fleet circumstance. Make sure you are plugging in to the right unit. Number four, investigate and research the system. This is the part where you gain information on the different aspects of the suspected circuits. Write down important information. This will save you time. Number five, diagnostic conclusions using either OEM supplied flowcharts or performing what I like to call logical testing. The outcome is a conclusion based on a test result. Note the number three rule. This helps identify intermittent problems and ensures accurate problem solving diagnostics. The goal is to be 100% accurate with your determinations. Try it three times. Number six, determinations based on your diagnostic tests what is the best approach to repairing the problem? Do you need to go back to step number four? Number seven, verification. If repairs are made, verify the repairs. This is trying to recreate the customer's complaint. This test needs to be performed before the unit is returned to the customer. And finally, number eight, verification outcome. If the verification was successful, congratulations. All you have left to do is fill out your work order. If you were not successful, please return to step number one. So let's get back to our Allison transmission problem. I managed to find a troubleshooting manual and punched in our code. And as you can probably tell, I'm on step number four, investigate and research the system. So I'm gaining as much information as I can on this fault code and why it threw this fault code. So there's a 24 pin pass through connector and our 80 pin TCM connector. We also have a simplified version of electronic circuit and it shows our high side driver number two should have battery voltage as an output. It controls that output via pin 71, the transmission control module connector, feeds it to pin 16 of the transmission bulkhead pass through connector. Now that we have this information, how about we go do a visual and perform some logical testing and move on to step number five. So I have located the transmission control module. It was located above the drive shaft, bolted to a cross member. Uh, I had a hard time with this one. It's normally a 10 mil head, but it was so rusted over that my sockets weren't working. So I'm gonna pause the video and show you a special tool that I got to use and it worked. Once the connector was removed, I inspected each pin individually, paying close attention to pin 71 and nothing obvious was observed. Our next step is to inspect the 24 pins of the transmission bulkhead connector while paying close attention to pin 16, but nothing obvious was observed. All right, so we're currently in pin 71 of the TCM connector. And pin 16 of the transmission bulkhead connector. So there we have it. There's our confirmation. We have an open circuit between pin 71 and pin 16 in the main wiring harness. My repair strategy involves running a temporary overlay wire to see if we can get this fault code to go away. All right, guys. So I'm just going to show you what I found quickly here. I was about to jump it with my test leads. Um, so I had to peel this connector off. So I can get in there. I had to peel this connector off. 
the backing for it. And as you can see, what an unusual spot for the wire to be rubbed out in the OEM harness behind a protective cover seems kind of ironic. So now we're going to go from step five, diagnostic conclusions to step six, determinations, and go ahead and repair this wire. And hopefully go on to step number seven, repair verification from there. Okay guys, we're gonna test our repair. Go ahead and connect to this thing. And the fault codes are gone. So that means that we can confirm this repair and send this truck on its way. So there you have it guys. We got this truck fixed. We got another happy customer and I hope you've enjoyed the content. So that means hit the like button, leave a comment below and don't forget to subscribe. This is Mitch at Diagnostic North signing off.